Hi there. This is The Inevitable. This is the new podcast from Motor Trend where we talk about what's going to happen to the future of the car. We're talking about EVs. We're talking about cars that drive themselves. Cars that don't even have steering wheels. Insane. Where are we going and how are we going to get there? I'm joined as always by my co-host, the lowest of the low, Mr. Motor Trend, Ed Lowe. How are you doing, Ed? I'm doing awesome. Yeah. It's raining. That's weird. It's weird for L.A. It's yes. really weird. I drove here in a Jeep, and I'm leaving in a plug-in Jeep. I'm leaving in the, uh, the Jeep 4XE. Hopefully, the battery is full so I can enjoy the electric experience. Today, though, really interesting guest because it's a guy I work with every week, mm-hmm. not you, Spike Ferriston. So Spike, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, he's a TV writer by trade, comedian, yep. funny guy. He wrote the Soup Nazi episode of, of Seinfeld, yep. so his place in history is secured. On our last show, he told me that no one in 40 years will be reading me. and It was really a dark, depressing moment. Um, But anyways, but he's a a huge car person. Uh, I'm trying to get away from the term car guy because it's, you know, for a lot of reasons. But he's a big Porsche collector. Um, And it'll it'll be interesting because he recently bought his wife a Tesla Model Y. Interesting. Yeah. Because I think... Given his background, I did a bunch of reading. I prepped as usual. And he's owned a lot of very interesting cars. Yes, a lot of uh, exotic vehicles, a lot of Porsches. Um, I'm very curious to see whether that purchase, what it means to him, whether he's he's a convert. I would have to say I'm going to bet. Now, how would you guess? How would you guess? I'm going to yeah. bet, like, probably not. Like, you know, if you're buying a uh, – if, you know, if your wife has a vehicle, doesn't mean you necessarily approve. You might make a, a decision based on – her needs, so his not wife, just so you know, is like it's. it's, it's uh, I don't know if you if you watched uh, uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, okay. um, but but Cheryl, uh, Larry's fictional wife on the thing, is like you know kind of left her career to become an activist, and it, maybe it's modeled on Spike's wife. I don't know, probably not. But, but she's she's really politically active. Like she's at all the okay. uh, BLM protests and this okay. and that. And I know Spike has told me that he's had a long history with the Prius that was initiated by his wife. Yeah, so um, I would say all this is evidence to me that. Uh, Spike would maybe will smile through gritted teeth about the the Model Y, but will is will be like, no way, man! I am uh, internal combustion or uh, for life. Uh, gas is in my veins, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I'll say this: uh, I, I do know the answer, and I don't think he's getting rid of his Porsche collection anytime soon. However, we'll find out. But well, let me ask you this. Have you – well, first of all, we know where you are on EVs, but, you know, you obviously went through a conversion. You started your career uh, – your car career, at least, as it was a sport compact car, right? Uh, actually, I had a little tiny publication out of Orange County called Import Racer. Oh, Import Racer, Not yeah, to be confused sure. with Import Tuner. This right, is Import right, right. Racer. It was even smaller. It was a bi-monthly. It was like 60,000 circ. Uh, but you went through a period where you know you were all in on internal combustion. Oh, yeah. And then what, 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 what changed you? What was what was the I moment? would still say I'm a big internal combustion fan. Like I'm, a, I'm I'm a big look. I think around the office we say right. Uh, this is an Angus McKenzie ism. Um, I always tell people we are first of all. It's not like we are agenda free at Motor Trend. Like we are pro car. It is not pedestrian trend. It is not bicycle trend. It's it not is, mobility. It it's is not car. It is not scooter trend. <laughs> right. It's all about yeah, yeah. automobiles, cars. Yeah. yeah. We we love them. We want all of them to be good, and this is the Angus McKenzie ism. And we're disappointed when they're not. Very true. Right? And I think actually in this moment we're at, which is really interesting, is that people ask me all the time, what car should I buy? Like, what should I, you know, what, what should I consider? And, what, and sometimes if they're smart, they ask me, what should I avoid? And, like, uh, it's very hard to actually say. There aren't really – there are no real lemons out there. There, very, there, very there are few. no very, terrible very cars. Few. Very – I could name probably a couple. But... Like, but truly awful. Like, yeah. I would say, like, oh, my God. Like, it's either unsafe or a total waste of money. Like, it's all up to, like, what you want, what you like. We are – and then if you go to the other end from the performance side, this is, like, the golden age of – Gas powered oh, horsepower. Oh, we're oh, at like yeah. this is like peak. We're talking about insane numbers. That, yeah. that I, I think we have another five years of this golden age too. I think it's gonna the cars are gonna keep, internal combustion cars are gonna keep getting better and better and better until they're really? gone. But even the, even with V8s kind of on their last oh, yeah. their last gas like oh, naturally yeah. aspirated V8s like just going away almost completely. Look, that Z06 isn't even out yet, right? That's gonna be the best V8 of all time, and mm. they will they, they'll be they'll be you know they'll be eight years of that or however long. Okay, you know, I, so I still think. Golden, golden ages. Right. Platinum age is coming. So to your – and to your question, yeah. 
Um, I love cars. I love internal combustion cars. And it really is, you know, the the podcast, the the content series we're doing, we call it the inevitable. This is, and I, I love, I love, I'm going to beat everyone to death with the name, but it is the inevitable podcast. It is inevitable that we do this. It's inevitable we talk about EVs. But I've been under tremendous pressure to do something like this for a long time, and I always you have. Say, oh yeah, I've been aware of this. Yes, yeah. and and I've always said it's not we're not ready. Like that, mm-hmm. we've received no signal, no signal at all from our audience that they that they care anything about electric vehicles except when they're Tesla. Mm-hmm. And this is something that we noticed in the last eighteen months. You know, traffic to our online stories on EVs. Right. Gone up through two the roof. through the roof three three hundred and eighty percent or something like that wow. on uh, on page views alone and like you know for the end of twenty twenty one that in the top twenty articles for the year seven of them are on electric vehicles and they're not all seven or Tesla right, uh, right. Rivian Which is, is in there yeah our truck Ford of the year Lightning. our Lucid our yep. car of the year was in there yep. and uh, yes Ford F one fifty Lightning yep. and the most incredible thing about if those of you guys who know media and, and online media, I said year to date. So lightning, the lightning announcement in 2021 was early in the year. And so, and that, the stuff just builds. So as, yeah. thanks to search engines and all that stuff, like I mean, that traffic remains high. Lucid and Rivian were later in the year. Were these, were like, these were like yeah. summer and they still managed to crack the top 20. It was after okay? summer. It was after summer. Right. Yeah, it was so, after summer. This means that, and again, the, the other thing. This again, we're super nerding out here, but the traffic that we get on MotorTrend.com comes almost the the vast majority comes from search engines. It's right. literally people right. going into Google, can't and, fight Google, and typing in what they want to see. Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, how much yeah. does a Tesla cost? Is one of our biggest stories. You know, what is a Lucid? What is a Rivian? That's how people come find our content. So literally, we have a very strong signal. People are now interested. Uh, mass adoption of electric vehicles, electrified vehicles, we think is inevitable. That's why we're here. It's also changed my mind personally. I've been talking to my wife. Like, our next vehicle has to be an EV right. uh, for a number of reasons. But honestly, some of them are professional. Like, I need to – I've driven a lot of EVs. I sure. drive them for work. But I don't have any experience with, uh, like, regular home charging. And, and there is something to be said about putting your money where your mouth is. Exactly. Like I, I bought an Alfa Romeo Giulia. A, I love it. But B, we did pick it as car of the year. You right. Know? And, and, and to buy something that wasn't that is sort of like, well, wait, why would you pick it? You know. Right. But right. I do love it. But uh, since Ed won't answer the question, I remember – very well. This is – and again, when, when they write the history books about, uh, you know, I don't know, the EV, I think there will be a moment in there when we named the Model S Car of the Year. Yep. And, and before that, you know, I'd driven – Tesla Model S. Tesla Model S. I'd driven the, the Tesla Roadster. That was an EV I'd driven. And I'd driven a couple other EVs. And they were just all – you know, there wasn't many, but – The they, science they, projects, right? Yeah. I remember that one, uh, Kokoda. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, and they were they were just really bad, right? And the, and in the year before, we'd actually voted the Chevy uh, Volt, not quite an EV, but it was the first plug-in electrified. Uh, yeah, and but I I didn't vote for it for Car of the Year. I think I had it like second place. Um, but I remember when we that moment when we voted, and you know, and I it was it was unanimous, and that means all eleven of us felt the same way strongly that this you know brand new thing was the Car of the Year. And I remember. I asked the question, I said, you know, put your hand up if you said anything personally or professionally mentioning that the Model S was going to be vaporware. And I remember, I'll never, I don't know if you remember this, but 10 hands went up, Hmm. one hand didn't, that was your hand, and you said something like, eh, my mom said if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything. (laughs) And th- and it was it was such an unbelievable moment because all of us had professionally basically yeah. ragged on this thing like it's never going to happen. There's right. no way you can do it. Right. It's the next Tucker. And now you know the other day I read that there more Teslas were registered in the U.S. than I think BMWs or Mercedes oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever it was. Something maybe it might have been combined. <laughs> no, it wasn't combined. But there was more more Tesla SUVs sell than yes. But anyways, or sedans than 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 all the German luxury brands together. If you count Model Three, Model S. But anyways, like I, I'll just never forget that moment. And also remember that was the same week that Elon docked his rocket ship with the International Space Station. Like pretty crazy moment in time. If you go back and look at this. Yeah, and I yes, and we, t- we we it's a topic we revisit a lot, especially now. It's it's always great to look back on the ones that uh, you know actually were newsworthy and and significant. Like we don't maybe talk a lot about the Malibu or 
or <laughs> or the the TDI golf. Let's not talk about that one at all. How about <laughs> Chrome bumps? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know, I, yeah, I, I remember the the conversations that occurred after that 2013 car, the announcement of Tesla Model S, oh. and um, yeah. their former CMO, this guy George Blankenship, he came from Apple. He, he was like a year later. We got we were we got together at some event. He's like, you know, honestly, you guys giving us that award in the fall of 2012 was the inflection point. It was the start yeah. of this hockey stick. And uh, where everybody, then other awards came and we turned the tide of opinion. Because yes, Angus had been very vocal. You had been fairly vocal, but Angus had written several columns about how, oh, these Silicon Valley guys, what do they know about cars? They're going to find out. Right, And right, then the right. difference is all this automotive, this car nerds, we drove the thing yeah, and we just said, okay, this is like... It was really good. We don't know anything about the business plan or how well, they're going to start a company. Say the other part of that of that day that really stands out in my mind was after we'd given the award, we'd all kind of settle down. We realized that, like, you know, Tesla has no money. They're not going to advertise and, like, your publisher's wow. going to kill us and everything. Was uh, Chris Theodore. So one of our guest judges is usually almost always this guy, Chris Theodore, who was a former head of engineering for Chrysler. And for Ford. Then he became the head of engineering for Ford. And he's like, he's like, I absolutely believe that the car, that the Tesla should be the car of the year, the business plan makes no sense. I do not see how this business plan works. He's like, I, and I remember then we went to the party in New York and we we're partying with Elon and, uh, you know, uh, his lady friend at the time. And Chris was still sitting there on the couch, you know, like drinking a martini going, right. I don't see how this business right. plan makes any sense. Right. But it's car of the year. Yeah. It's not business plan of the year. It's not business plan it's of the year. what I tell you know? people. But remember, too. You know, and we didn't buy any, of course, because we're ethical journalists. But when we made the announcement, I think Tesla stock was 19 bucks a share. 19. Uh, by the night of the party, it was up to like 79 or 80 or something like that. Right. It had risen a lot. And then, you know, now it's like. Last know, time I checked, I don't know, it's been a little bit of a down market, but it was yeah. over 1,000, but it had split. Well, it split. So it was over 6,000. Yeah, it was over 6,000 yeah. times. Yeah. But if you would have bought Bitcoin at the same time, it was up 60,000. So, right. Anyway. So, well, um, all that's a great. Uh, yeah, to, to a comedy writer, I'm glad we have Spike coming into. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to to fill Spike in on all this and actually get his opinion on whether his personal move towards electrification is is in his mind a signal to bigger things for across the industry across the sort of consumers. And also, you know, as a car collector, like are these things are these battery powered vehicles collectible? I think is kind of right. you know, cuz car collecting has really exploded, especially during the pandemic. Right. Um, you know, used car prices are at a, you know, a, a, not only an all-time high, but like a forever all-time high. They'll never do this again. So yep. Yeah, it should be a good conversation. Well, let's get him in here. All right. Come on, Spike. All right. All right. Let's well, do it. we're here with <laughs> Spike Ferriston. He is the host of a podcast I'm on called Spike's Car Radio. Um, heard about it, heard about it. Yeah, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, you're also notable, you've written for a number of TV shows, uh, but you're here because you are a pretty major car collector, specifically a Porsche collector, but you purchased a Model Y, Tesla Model Y for your wife, and you haven't shut up about it in about <laughs> three months, four months, <laughs> and we want to talk about how someone goes from you know, driving around in a 1958 Porsche Speedster to mm-hmm. not being able to stop talking about a Tesla, an EV. Let's do it. I am ready. And All let's right. answer the question. Uh, the name of this podcast, is EV ownership inevitable? Is electrification in your life inevitable? That's the name. Yeah. You think so? Of, no, I know so. Johnny, <laughs> you guys know so. That's why you're even making the podcast. We're asking you. We're asking you, though. <laughs> well, Yeah. <clears throat> One of, and Johnny will attest to this. It always makes me laugh when our co-host Zuckerman, who uh, we have a little uh, sound button that goes, okay, boomer, where every time he talks about electric, I just can't get around it. I'm never – you don't have to make that decision. It's coming whether you like it or not. That's right here. In- yes. inevitable, right? Yes, exactly. It's just coming. And how do we know that? Well – you know, I, I didn't grow up in California, but I always saw that what was happening in California tends to sweep across the country, except for the coronavirus comes the other way. Right. But <laughs> we're here, you know, we, I think, embraced electric before anyone else, primarily because we have nice weather. We don't have snow. Right. And you have California thinkers here. Uh, Johnny and I and, and people and yourself in the automotive world get these uh, press cars yep. and you get to see big picture stuff. You know, I've always been able to see big picture stuff as long as I've been driving pretty much everything. You see the direction of cars in a way other people don't. And when you drive this electric stuff, 
and you experience it, you realize this is this there's a revolution happening. Right? Right. And I looked, you know, I got this Model Y, and I looked at my garage at my Saunders electric bike, and I and I go, God, here it is, here here it's coming, and you don't have to make the decision; the, the decision is made bef- uh, for you, right. and it's going to be amazing. It's really going to be great. So why? Okay, let's get. I want to get into because uh, yeah, I agree, it's, it's inevitable to use right. the, the title of our show. But you also really like the Model Y. You're constantly like the Model Y did this. I you know. So so what is it? Uh, it's, because right now for the next at least you know four or five years, you still will be able to buy as many gasoline cars sure. as you want. Yeah, and they'll, and they'll be awesome by the and way. The, yeah, and they're we're getting like better, a peak, better. We're like peak yeah. internal combustion. Everything's right now. getting better. But what 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 do you like so much about the EV experience? Well, let me back up to how my family uh, got this SUV, this electric thing, right? I think like a lot of folks, you know, and it it was all driven by my wife, whose politics were like, I want to get out of fossil fuels as far back as when they started, uh, created that Prius. The first Prius came out, right? She goes, I'm getting that Prius. And she loved it. And I was like, what the hell is this? It's ugly. This hybrid. I go, oh, everything it stands for. She goes, and it's going to – and it was green. It was green Uh, metallic because I want to be green, Spike. And I was like, I am going to vomit from all of your politics and this car. I can't believe I have to look at this in the driveway. And then I got in it. And I'm like, oh, this is kind of fun. (laughs) Right? And I enjoyed the technology. And I – I saw some kids pointing at me, and I rolled down my window, and they went, hey, nice Prius. And then they gay bashed me. They, they, used, the, they used the F word. Wow. That might have been me. And I went, I went, what? They go, yeah, nice Prius. And they said, I'm like, oh, my God. What is – so that's kind of – as a car culture, that's kind of where I enter, right? Okay. Four Priuses later. Four? It was three the other day. There was a fourth oh, Prius. Wow. One got Jeez. smashed. Okay. One got oh, smashed. Man. Erica, she goes, I, I need to do something different. So she tiptoes a little closer with the 530EI performance, which is a okay. plug-in hybrid okay. BMW that gets 17 miles all electric, okay. right? What you learn from that experience as you're getting closer to this uh, the jumping into the cold pool of electric is I love these 17 miles, but they are not enough. Right. right, totally, right. and you got a little gas tank, so you're still going to the gas station a lot. But you're like this electric, this quiet, this experience is something I really like. Right, right. so lease is up. She goes, uh, I don't know what to get. I said, you're, you're lucky. I used to host a show called The Car Matchmaker. I can figure this out. And you don't know what you're talking. It's an argument. And I say, let I found your. Did she know you hosted a show called she The Car does Matchmaker? Does not give it. That's kind of like my she wife. She does not trust I, my opinion. When I, when I give my opinion on a car, she's like, well, why should I listen to you? And I'm like, oh. any, any, Any husband listening right now is going, yes, that's me too. Yes. I know a lot about this, and my wife does not want to hear any of it. Yep, right. Anyway, I said, if you just trust me, I think I can find the perfect EV for you. And I did my research. You know, I listen to Johnny a lot. He's, he drives a lot of stuff. And... Every, all roads led to the Model Y for a variety of reasons, but primarily hatchback three rows, uh, 300 plus electric miles of range. Okay. Because I didn't want to say this, she's going to forget to plug the damn thing in, and then she's going to be taking my Defender. Okay. So <laughs> here it is. This is it. I put in the order. It it comes. I tell her, good news. I ordered you a Model Y. She said, what? <laughs> I oh, said, oh, nice. just come to Malibu. Uh, to the Tesla place Sunday, and we'll uh, drive it, and you're gonna you're gonna love it, right? We go down there. It's such an amazing experience. Right. It's already different. Everything that I've done up until that point, I'm I have not talked to a dealer. I was on a website. I gave them a credit card. I spec'd a car. There weren't a lot of choices, and they said the card's going to be delivered in a you know I think it was a couple months. Things got delayed a little bit, but right. it's it's all there. On I'm not talking to anybody, right? Right. I go to I go to the Malibu place. They go, just come in. We'll give you a car. They go, okay, hi. Just take that one. There's no driver's license. There's no anything. They just <laughs> give me the key to one of their Teslas. Erica goes, that's it. I go, yeah, get in. I go, hey, how does this uh, autopilot uh, driver assist program work? He goes, just hit the stock a couple times. He goes, okay, you'll be fine. Just go. They they push us out of the dealership, right? Yeah. Again, these are things that don't happen. Right. Up in, in my life until this point, and we're driving around this thing. I'm freaking out. I drive it first, drive it in the canyon. She drives it back. We get out of the car. She goes, I hate this. 
Oh, I really? can't. She goes, I can't. I can't drive this. I said, What do you mean? She goes, It's like a golf cart, the stop and the go. Mm. And I say, Well, it's a little too late for that. <clears throat> but I knew you were going to say this. And let me tell you what's going to happen in a week, maybe a little longer than a week, possibly in a couple of days. You're going to walk into the kitchen. You're going to give me a kiss, and you're going to go, "Holy, shit, you were right. This is the greatest thing I've ever driven." And that happened. How you long? Know, How long? It was a couple of days. Okay. <clears throat> and she said the classic remarks. I was at a red light looking at the 76 gas station, and gas was six dollars a gallon. I was like, I don't do that anymore. Right. Right. You're never going back. You're never going back. She right. said, you know, the the golf cart driving that I rephrased and threw back to her as one pedal driving right, right, right. eliminates a step. Right. Be getting into the car and it's already on and it knows how to drive. It eliminates a step. And it's, she starts to see how many steps uh, have been eliminated to make her life easier. I get into the, the Model Y and I just see no choices. I, I just see a nice kind of faux wood dash and not a lot of decisions to make. And the thing knows what I want. To, and suddenly I'm in love. But primarily – for me, right? So she's over the moon about it. I couldn't drive it today. I tried to drive it here today, and she goes, stay away from my wife. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's how protective <laughs> she is now. Right. But you can see how the family is, like, coming around to this. You know, uh, one of the simplest things, the gas station is at your house now. Yep. Right, 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 right. Imagine taking your iPhone and plugging it in down the street. Right, that's what we're all doing when we're putting gas. Smartphone in a car. on wheels. Yep. Once yep. it's like on-demand content in entertainment, and, and then once fu- you start there, that's it. You yeah, never it, go it's, back. It's funny how hard. That's such a good point, though, because I, I, I've been saying this since the Model S was like, "Hey, you wake up with a full tank of gas. Like all you gotta do is go to bed. You right. don't have to go to the gas station. Yes. You just gotta like what you yeah. plug it in. Yeah. And people, they're like, "Oh, but charging. Where do I charge?" I'm like, "Listen, you're not road tripping every day of your life. Like, yes, if you do a road trip, you got to plan a little bit." You know, big deal. But you, you do have to do that. But everyone, everyone's, like, always convinced that charging is going to be a huge part of their day. And it, it's just not. Right. You know? It's just it's not, not be in part. any way. Yeah. It, it, range anxiety, none of it is real. Those aren't real. You can have range anxiety with gas. Oh, right? oh totally. I've had it. And, and yeah. here's, it, there's <laughs> such pleasant surprises, at least with Tesla, right? You have this uh, charging network, right? So there's one in Malibu by Bills where we go and we have coffee. It becomes something really fun to do. You you go, hey, I'm just going to go charge this thing up. I'm going to sit, get a cup of coffee with Bill. And suddenly I have 100, 150 miles. Like five minutes later, you walk back and it's a a nice experience, mm-hmm. which you don't have that experience at a gas station, right? right? Ever. ever. Yeah. The big surprise for me was the app and the software. <clears throat> okay, talk the, about this. Yeah, because well, yeah, the, it, it, again, you open up this app. Just, just real quick, this is something that is as reviewers who get cars for like a week, we don't necessarily get to do deep yeah, dives we don't dive into, into like the updates. We use and the, the valet. We use a valet key. Or, yeah, or yeah. If we're, right, if right. we're smart, so we, we don't, do we don't get app. you know. So I'm, and I always hear. From you and lots of other people about how much they love. Like I woke up and the car is different, or the app did this, or whatever. Yeah, updates. You know, we've talked on our show. It's like a range. My my Defender got one update, which was a cool update. It went from uh, connected CarPlay to wireless CarPlay. Right. But <clears throat> and I, I'm not even going to say it's about updates because let's that's that's cool. But we get updates on our iPhone every sure, day, and that's sure. not such a big deal. The the cool stuff on the app. I'll open it up. Is again, there's nothing extra. There's no – I don't have to figure anything out. There's just these simple choices right here. Can, my controls, my doors, the temperature of the car right now, where the car is, um, one upgrade if I want it. I can make it faster from 0 to 60, from 4.7 <laughs> to 4.2, which I don't care about. How much is that? $2,000. <clears> yeah. I mean, that's, that, pretty that's pretty smart. Half a that's, second. I mean, I – it's it, it it's a good drop, but I'm thinking about from the other side, from <clears throat> Tesla's side. Like you're gonna do that, you're gonna get drunk, and you're gonna hit that one night late. <laughs> yeah, night. look, there it is, yeah. acceleration boost, two yeah, grand. But there, I mean, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. like wow. And then, but you don't need it because the car is quick. It's uh, four yeah, seven. And, and if, and you're, if, you're, if your spouse is driving it, like yeah, yeah four seven is already super good. Summon, which you go. Why would I want to do that? Right. Tight parking spot. Tight parking spot. Yeah. yeah. Here's where Summon – it's it, Summon I always thought was about showing off, right? Sure. You know, look, look what I can do from sure, stand sure. back and make your car move. I have used – I use it, I would say, once a week because oh, yeah? I'll have the, – the car will be in the driveway or it will be somewhere and someone will say, hey, can you move this for a second? 
and I've done it from up in my office looking down in my driveway. I press it, and the car just goes out of the way <laughs> and, and, of and, a gardener or something. And they're like, what is happening? Yeah. And in that moment, you fall in love with Tesla. <laughs> in that moment right there, you go, "This I can't not have these things in all of my new cars anymore. And you start to, you know, I love my Defender, but you get into it, and it feels old. Right. It feels like the old version. Even though version. it's newer, or just as old. It's yeah, the same but it age. feels yeah, yeah. like the old version of what a car might be, okay? And that is a, that's an amazing feeling. So, you know, for me now, and you know that I may be trading in that uh, Defender any minute. Any minute now. <laughs> it's, I've had it now for a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, they've got the rack coming. They've they got, do. <laughs> finally got the rack. Yeah, yeah. Steve yeah. Carell, actually, okay. he, he the... bought one. <laughs> and he... <laughs> he said, I don't want the rack in the snorkel. And I said, well, I'll take it. Um, so for those of you who have never heard uh, Spike's show, Spike's Car Radio. That's a scoop for it's, you. It's uh, yeah, we, it's a long-running joke that, like, <laughs> it's been a year of Spike trying to get a rack and, and, and Land Rover, like, not helping. No, they hurting, did. Hurting, At the hurting, same actually. moment, Land Rover actually did source one, too. And oh, okay. So now I have two, two racks, racks. Hey, which is go. bizarre. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, it's. I'm thinking about the Rivian truck, kind of based on your drive and your love of this stuff. You talked about Lucid and how much you love them, and they've been out in Malibu, and, and, you know, I'm a fan. But it's you have to have, in my opinion, you have to have these apps and this software and this usability now Hmm. if you're going to have an electric car. You can't – I love the Taycan, but you can't just have that. You need to have this. Interesting. Because Tesla is bigger than the vehicle. Right. Well, do you need this and the supercharger network? You need all of it. Okay. As I understand, I thought Tesla was going to open up their supercharger network to everybody, they and everybody was going to open it up. They to, said they, they have were. a they the was it Sweden or one of the Nordic Norway. countries? Norway, Norway put a gun to their head and said you have to open yeah. it up to yeah, everybody yeah. else. So that right. that's what sort of that got the headline. Whether they do it in the rest of the world is yeah. Tesla says a lot of things that they don't TBD. necessarily follow through with. Which right, is, which right. Is fine, you know, move fast, break things. Silicon but he, Valley. here's a here's something I learned in uh, three seasons of Car Matchmaker. Everybody hates dealerships as much as I do. Yes. No one likes to go there. No one likes to go there for repairs. What's the number? That, it's like 72? 80, 85% of people wish the dealership experience was right. uh, better, See, faster. I'm, I'm such a weird like, minority. I love car dealerships. Because, okay. like, they just, they're Four not. Four hours? They're just, it's, Let me no, draw you the box. I bought, <laughs> I bought when I got my Alpha, I was in and out in 26 minutes. That's how That's, it, it that was. Is, yeah, it was unusual, but again, they can't unusual. pull a fast one on me, you know. So I'm, right. I'm in an extreme minority. When we got our, so. our Tesla, it was like two minutes. No, I know. <laughs> well, didn't, car, they, didn't they just it's drop just, it off in your driveway or something? They do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't even have to be home. Yeah, they just go. We'll leave it wherever you want to leave it, and they yeah. leave this thing there, and then they activate it, and it's off. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. forgot about that. That's right. But that's the buy part. Now that now the fix part, right? As I admitted to you on the podcast, and I'm not proud of myself. I'm ashamed. I scratched the. Out of my wife's windshield with a Brillo pad, trying yes. to clean some sap off of it. Yes, you did. Like an you idiot. Did say that. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. got up at six thirty in the morning. I wasn't, and I was just going to wait. And by the time He's I cleaned side, everything off, green side of the pad, green <laughs> side of the pad, I went, "Oh my god, I'm not supposed to do this. I couldn't." And I ruined her windshield, so I had to get that fixed. I went onto the app. I requested the service. They said, "Do you want to go here on this day?" I go, "Yes." I drop it off. They go, "Thank you." Here's your new car. I leave. Oh, wait, they had a loaner Tesla waiting. They had a loaner Tesla oh, waiting. Oh, wow. The windshield, there was also a problem with the hatch, the struts on the hatch. That's going to take another day. I'm getting texts all day long from Wesley at Tesla. We'll have it uh, Wednesday. <laughs> don't worry. Tuesday, hey, just remember tomorrow we'll have it. Hey, it's done. I was driving uh, on the, uh, the Pacific Coast Highway. Hey, it's done. I'm stopped. I pressed the button and I Apple Pay. Your car is ready. I text my wife. You can go get it whenever you want. She shows up. They give her the, her car, and she leaves. Yeah. She goes, there was no guy sitting there with paper going, who's your service advisor? Right, right, right. <clears throat> do you right, see right. how quickly no, oh. everything was done? Yeah. And do you see how you can't go back after that to yeah, yeah. a normal well, I'm, dealership? So I'm dealing with that now because my little Ford blew up, and so it's being diagnosed at the <clears> dealer. <throat> and there's a, there's a lot of the service advisor and, you know, dropped it off with the wrong mm-hmm. security guard and who has exactly. the key and there's right. a lot of nonsense. Well, yeah. so how much of a sea change is this for you personally, right? You've been in love with cars for a long time. You've we, owned, we, real you've quick, owned a lot. Do you think we should list out what, what do you own? <laughs> well, <laughs> what, no, I, drive, I your, drive old Porsches. Yeah, in terms of your old Porsches. 
<clears throat> right now, I'm just driving the '80s cars the most. And, you know, the old Zagato 356 that you see. Well, how, how many old, how many old air cooled Porsches? Does... Well, I don't like to get into all the numbers of my cars, Johnny. More or less I, than, I, than ten. Uh, right around there. Okay, that's, that's a good collection. <laughs> yeah, it goes up and down. It's it, been it, as, as few as two, and it sometimes goes up over ten. But, but yeah, considerably less. But than I say... like old air cooled manual gearbox cars. That's right. what I like to collect. Okay. Right. Okay. And then, but you mentioned that you've had four Priuses, and then you had the BMW. My wife did. Okay, yeah, I'm wife. always but buying that car for her. This is the first one that I've coveted, the Model Y. What does that, what span is that, would you say, from your entrance into, uh, into first a hybrid, then a plug-in hybrid to EV? Is that is that a 10-year span? <clears throat> Well, what year is the first Prius year? Yeah. So I would say well, the first one was 2004. Like, <coughs> 2003, I might need a cup two, of water three. if you have it. Yeah, we have yeah. A, we, can get, we can get a We'll get one. I would say we'll, Yeah, we'll get one. The first Prius was 2006 cuz it was delivered to me on set before, while my wife was away and I crashed it on the first day. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Someone crashed into it, but oh, okay. I Fair was enough. not Fair supposed enough. to be driving it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. It's funny, the studio yeah. where I used to do my I, show. I, 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 the first time I met you, I was sitting. Well, that's right, right. You, but it I was always makes where you me. Are, I'm sorry, but you my, were sitting here. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's something the about tables have turned, Ferriston. I love this place. Yeah. So 2006 was wow, okay. in, in the fall or summer of 2006. So 15 years has been your yeah, electrifying yeah. experience. Yeah, Elect- and, you know, I can say that my interest in it. Only started with that BMW where I started to go, hmm, maybe I want to see this. Why don't I let Erica deal with it and I'll drive it periodically and get, you know, m- and think about what it's like. And I wasn't there until I drove that Tesla. On that day, on that test drive, I was in that car and for the first time I went, hmm. This, so I should now, have. I should have got this. Okay, <laughs> she well, should have got the Defender. <laughs> real quick, real quick, if I may. So, so you know, you're you're all in on the Model Y, but I know you've driven a Taycan. I have, and you're known as a large Porsche. And I love person. It. It, yeah. it, it. It's they've engineered Porsche into the driving experience. But, but would you get? I know no. you said about the app. You wouldn't get a Taycan. Not yet. Not yet. Because no. of the app. Look, I, I the, love the Porsche brand, and it will always be my favorite brand. The one thing they don't get right is, and, and you know, and I've said this to the guys when I meet them, I am tired. We used to say it a long time. I'm tired of these giant books of instructions with 20 pages dedicated to the radio. I, I don't mm. want to have to figure out how to unlock my door and whether it's one or two. There are too many choices here. We don't have time for this stuff. And Porsche, in the 992 – it, which I was in yesterday in the brand new turbo driving around. Um, it they've made it easier and ergonomically the cabin is nice and everything is where it is. It's there's still too much going on in there, right? When you look at that that Model Y, it's off putting. Or a Model Three, you go, there's nothing here, nothing, and you feel like hmm, maybe I'm not getting my money's worth. That very quickly turns into this is really relaxing. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I, I'm not being distracted by temperatures and pressures that I you – know, all of this information I don't need or don't want. No, that's such a great point because even like like in the new Bentley, you know, it's got a lot going on on the screen. But there's a button where you can hit a thing and it, it, a right, piece of wood right, flips right. over it's and it's just, you're looking at wood. Yeah, and then there's, there's a there's like a, a dark mode for the for the instrument cluster and just, you know, just a speedometer. That's all that's there. Right, so that right. Is it, but it's a great point, right? If, the, if it is inevitable that mass adoption of electrified vehicles – Vehicles, electric battery electric vehicles is coming. The much greater percentage of that pie is people who actually don't care that much about the car, right? right. Like they're not they're not enthusiasts like that. So they're not like super jazzed about sports cars or all the bells and whistles and tuning in all this fun stuff. They just want a, a great experience, get them from point A to point B safely, quietly, smoothly. And yeah, you're not you you don't have all these decisions you need to make or even look at because it's not right all there in front of you. It, and I would add this: you're going to love it, right? It's like saying, you know, it's like resisting the guys who have iPhones. I'm not going to touch that iPhone now. You rem- and I, I remember those you, people. Johnny, yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. They invented the cell phone. And who's going to get that? What kind of jerk would be there with a cell phone? <laughs> right. Now we all have two of them, yeah, three yeah, of them, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And we can't stay off of them. But I remember, I and remember, we love them. I remember I was, I was, for whatever reason, when the, when the iPhone came out, I was very anti-Apple. For no, for no good reason whatsoever. I just was. Sure. And I bought, like, three things that weren't iPhones. You know what I mean? Right, it was right. like like a, like God even knows what brand. Motorola Razor, whatever Nokia's. it was, whatever it was. The right? They're Ericsson, all dead. They're, they're all yes. gone. 
that are wiped off the face of the earth by Apple. Yeah. But I remember, I remember the first time I saw somebody's iPhone, and he's like, look at this. And he pulled up a web page. And I was like, that literally changes the world. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then I bought the worst phone ever made that had like yeah. you know, a pop-out keyboard, but it had a, a screen. You could get a web page. Never worked. Never worked. Right. And, yeah, it's, it was inevitable that I was going to get an iPhone because, you know, and I, I always tell people, they're like, you know, how are we going to get from here to there? And I'm like, once people get an iPhone, like, who? who no one leaves it, you know? It's like, you, you're just going to get the next iPhone. Right. Right? You know, because yeah. it's, just, it's just such good, it's just such a good ecosystem. And it becomes the standard, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. So the, t- the Tesla does these interesting little things every day that, you you know, you're sitting there at a, at a light and you're looking down at your phone and then it the, the light changes. And, you know, the, in California, we have just an epidemic of this. The, you're just sitting there, and nobody's moving at a green light, right? The Tesla <laughs> is watching, and it goes, Prompts bong. Right. Yeah. It just gives you a little right. notification. Yeah. You go, oh, bunch okay. of Hyundais are doing that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's yeah. going to be everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, going to yeah, be yeah, every yeah, car. Yeah. It needs to be every car. It's so funny how people aren't going to stop doing illegal things. We're going to make it easier, easier. for you to right. do illegal things. Yeah, of course. Right? Yeah. And, and, and the, you know, the autopilot stuff is not. It's driver's assist, right? It's a level two driver assist. I'm, I'm yeah. not sure about it's that. Le- but yeah. It's, it's misnamed, to, but it works okay. You have yeah. to babysit it. It works well on the highway. Right. And you... You know, I couldn't figure out how to kind of integrate it into my life because you're not exactly not driving. You're not exactly driving. You're in a twilight, you know, the same kind of space. You get a colonoscopy. (laughs) Yeah, half awake, (laughs) half asleep. But then you start to go, well, this is useful because, you know, on San Vicente Boulevard with no traffic, I can look down and check a couple messages here for a few seconds. And the car does just fine. And you're not a mass murderer. What do you mean? No, no, I'm saying, like, if, if the car doesn't have assist, if you check a couple messages, yeah, you're yeah, exactly, bus. right, yeah, 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 yeah. You don't want to. I'm not. You're not reading, but you can yeah. do something quickly, and the car can take over. It stays to the right, and it, 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 your speed is limited, so you're going slower, and it, and it, you feel comfortable, and it, it handles everything for you. So you know, you get used to this new way of driving and doing things, and this company that's thinking about you and how to eliminate steps, and that becomes the new iPhone. Right, and that's yep. where I am with Tesla. I'm hoping Rivian will be able to do the same. I'm hoping Lucid can do the same. You know, I, I like these American cars, the GMC Hummer. I love the transition from you know oil burning, smoky, conservative right. guy to <laughs> right, right, right. It's really cool crab walking electric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with uh, three times the power that the diesel yeah, would ever. Yeah, could and dream storage of space everywhere. There, yeah. all of this stuff is awesome, and right. I really do believe people are going to love it. They're not going to have to make a but compromise. It, it, They're going to love it. It's just you know back to what you said though about how you know people are so resistant. Like you know, so on the Model S, I don't know if they do it on the Y and the three, but on the Model S. They have the predictive gear. In other words, mm-hmm. when you get into the car, it automatically switches into drive. Oh, that's cool. You know, they do it on the right. on the S. And everyone was freaking out about it. And yeah. then I tried it out. And you know what it does? It just it knows what direction the car is facing. And it's like, hey, every morning when you get into your car and leave, you put it into drive or reverse. Right. right. So it just does that for you. And then you, you just hit a thing that says, yeah, that's actually the gear I want. Right. You know, but it's like it's brilliant. You yeah. know, it's like, yeah, of course, I, every morning I park the same. But you said removing steps. Yeah, 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 yeah. Removing steps. Yeah, yeah, I control that car from my phone whenever I want, right? I'm brushing yeah. my teeth and heating it up for the kids. Have and... you run over a skateboard or a cat or anything? You mean on autopilot? Uh, when, no, when you're doing uh, the summon. No, it won't. It won't do that. It's got yeah. It's got cameras and sensors. Everything's got sensors. You know. Just asking. No, I haven't. I mean, the the autopilot is not perfect, and there are moments where you go, okay, I'm glad I was keeping an eye on things. Sure. Notably on like the 405. I'm in. You know, I've got it set at 60. I've got a car in front of me, and you know, no hands on the wheel. It's kind of doing its thing, right? And the car in front of me jumps over to the left, so my car goes, I can go faster to 65. Right. I guess they added it at 65. We were doing, let's say, 50. So it starts to speed up really fast. A car in this lane decides to jump in front where this guy mm-hmm. just left. Yep. And that looked like this. That was going to be an accident. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I hit the brakes, and it wasn't a hard stop, but it, had I not been paying attention, that would have been an accident for yeah. sure. Yeah, right? yeah, Right? So that's – And they all do that. They all do that. You're that's... learning, right? You're learning. I, I – you know, like you guys, I, I'm watching things very closely. I don't think my wife would have been um, paying attention to it the way I was. <laughs> You're right. Okay. So sure. I, I would yeah. guess that there so is a So she's already lulled into, like, she believes in the... No, I just think 
my wife would never. She's like, no. And, and I, I'm not saying this about my wife in particular. I just right. people who aren't really car people aren't going to really pay attention to the car in that way and mm. send, yeah. you know understand the system and then understand there's an element of danger and risk here, right? right. They might just go, hey, let's go, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, I would guess some of these this reporting on these accidents is is somewhat accurate, right? right? But again, you love the product so much, you start to forgive it, right? Well, you love, you clearly love the product so much. <clears throat> Are you now? Is this like for you? Uh, you know, you, you reference, and I want to come back to that. You're the the car matchmaker series you did because I read up on 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 uh, on all of that. Um, are you just now just a convert, and are you just recommending these cars left and right to everybody who? Yeah. Is there oh, or sure. or is there a use case still for specific <clears throat> um, uh, ice gas cars that you like? Um. No, I mean on that show it was always I was always trying to figure out what what the person liked and where they needed to go and what was just outside their comfort zone, right? right? You know, uh, you know, as you know, most people kind of know what they want and they just right. want validation. Right, right. But uh, every once in a while you can do what I did with my wife, which is open up <clears throat> someone's eyes to a new experience and have them by buying the car first. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. And and uh, you know, and then she's like, "Oh my god, you're right." You know. So I do recommend it to a lot of folks. I recommended it to Jerry. I let him drive it. For those of you listening, that's <clears> Jerry <throat> Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah, Spike, because Spike is friends with, and we're together a lot because we're yep. working on something right now. But um, I want. Did he drive it? He did. Yeah, and, yeah. And, no, he gets it. He likes like... it. He. I, I don't ever say this is going to replace to someone like Jerry or even myself or you or Zuckerman. I always go, this is a new column for you. You don't have to eliminate anything. Right. The problem is if you tell Jerry that he went out and bought three more Porsches that afternoon. <laughs> we all have defenders, you know. Oh yeah, yeah he's yeah, got yeah. one. Oh, yeah, we okay. all got defenders. Oh, no Even Zuckerman's kind of tangentially got a Plan Z defender. Really? Um, oh, yeah. interesting. Uh, uh, he's never <clears throat> talked about that. No, no, because I think his uh, yeah, his yeah. friend is driving it a lot. Got it, got it, got it. But um, I think of this as just. And this was a stepping stone for me. I would have been six months ago. This is an, a kind of an extra car to have in the driveway and in the hangar to use. That's an interesting new way to drive. Now I'm ready to just go. This is this is going to be my daily. I want a daily this thing. Interesting. I want this wow. to be all my boring driving. Right. 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 And and that's, and a, that's a big case. shift for me. Right. That's a big okay. shift. Okay. Well, this is great because the last few that we've done of these podcasts, we started with all the personal stuff. And yeah. then we jumped into like the meat of it. This one we ju- we jumped yeah. right in. Yeah. So if we may, I can we can go back and talk about. No, some, you, I, you I, should. I mean, here's my thing. I I know Spike, and when he says Jerry, I know who he's talking about. But I think maybe people <laughs> listening have no idea the relationship. Yeah. So you know, you've worked with Letterman. You've worked with Seinfeld. You were a writer. But he was on a writer show, on both shows. Writer yeah. on mm-hmm. uh, Saturday Night Live, right? Or early days. Yeah. Yeah. Early days. Yes. Right. Um, so my question is Rope because the Simpsons one episode right one episode. really really funny episode right <laughs> so you know all these guys you're big in in car collecting um, Leno who I, I you know yep is he and this is a question this is a, this is a multi part question first of all is he the is does he have the best car collection is he does he have the biggest best car collection for oh, a funny for a funny man mm. for uh, an actor a Hollywood type or just in general Letterman, Seinfeld Leno <laughs> who's got the biggest who's got the best yeah. come on Spike spill the beans it's, it's, it's kind of a tough one there you go. I don't know Johnny it's a, well you know it's pretty good but I was always a better in the ratings than he was so I don't know. what are you talking about Jay <laughs> Have you seen my collection? <laughs> That's, I was... I've got a Volkswagen Beta from 1962 <laughs> that looks better than you in 1962. <laughs> I'm saying that. I think Spike's going to say Jerry has the best collection. Oh, be the my, best my is guess. a judgment. Yes, yes. Judge. Each, but, okay, but Leno has the judge. biggest. Each collection is very indicative of the personality of the person who's put it together. Okay. And I would not say any one collection is better. I would say they're all very... Uh, very Jay, very Jerry, very Dave, Dave okay. Letterman, right? Dave Letterman is is Porsches and beautiful Ferraris and Austin Healy's and race and cars, right? Doesn't he? I mean, he's he was got a, a racing team. Yes, yeah. I was yeah. on his first racing team. It was a go kart race I, in yeah, New York I City. Yep. <laughs> I saw that. It was one of his first drivers, and we did cheat to win. That's how you per win. Per his yeah. direction. <laughs> hey man, two ki- two kinds of racers, right? right. Cheaters and losers. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. What are you doing in the office, Mike? Hey, what are you doing in the office? Oh, well, right in the top ten list. He goes, "You better get out to a uh, a race shop." <laughs> That's what he said. Get out. 
it to one of those uh, speed shops in Long Island and figure out how to uh, rig that Briggs and Stratton so that we win on Saturday. I went, ha, ha, ha. And he goes, I'm serious. Nice. I went, wow. He goes, yeah. If you're not if you're not pushing the uh, limits of what's acceptable, you're not racing. You know what I mean? Hundred percent right. And he was calling every day. I mean, it was a charity event for MS. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Old go karts. What better place to cheat? Yeah, yeah. yeah we won. <laughs> yeah, damn, damn it, right we did. won. We yeah. removed springs. We had purple gas, and we won. <laughs> and then they inspected the engine, ah. and they took away our props <laughs> and gave us best uniforms. <laughs> they said, "Great job, but you guys cheated." And I go. Yeah, we did. <laughs> don't, don't, please don't write about that. All right, well, you, you've sidestepped so, the question. Who's yeah, got so, the well, best? Hang on, Who's hang the hang best? So, I, all because, great. Because Letterman's is the one I know the least about. But just from a numerical standpoint, Leno has the most vehicles, right? Hands down. I, I don't know. I, no, kind of, I, I, I really don't know numbers of anybody's see, vehicles. See, I think Jerry has the most. I think Jerry has so many cars that like you don't I, even know where they but are. But then aren't Jerry's cars all Porsches? Or no, Porsche not at all. Jerry, Jerry has uh, Volkswagens. <laughs> Alfa Romeos. Uh, plural, all plural? Like not like one of each? I think or? so. You know, what else? I can't convince him to buy a Ferrari at all. But there are a lot of funny little cars in there that okay. people don't know about. But a lot of Volkswagens. A lot of Volkswagen stuff. Yeah, he's been getting into like <clears throat> Beatles. That's yeah, and little like Fiats. Yeah. He talks about that all the time. He's got a bunch of Fiats and cars. He's got a little MGB. So my theory is that because... Jay has everything in one place. It seems bigger, but like you know, Jerry's collection, from what I know, they're all so different. It's, it's, just but Jerry different like, ideas. did multiple states. Spread Jay's all over. collection he's got, he's is got like Eric stuff. Yeah, but the, steam I think cars. of Jay's collection as the Peterson, the Valley version of the Peterson Auto Museum. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a workshop slash Peterson Auto Museum right, right. with displays yeah, yeah, and yeah. amazing, yeah. beautiful things. Oh, yeah. yeah. His thing when you go to his hangar is everything starts by point to anything you can start. And it's true. Okay, old fire truck with a steam engine. Let me start it. He does. <laughs> and you're, it's, it's so impressive. And then there's a guy over there building Oldsmobile wheels. He, right. it's, and he's in his overalls. It's a whole, that's a whole vibe. Right. That's a whole scene. Jerry's is, uh, you know, uh, more of a, a, of a pristine museum. Uh, that even when the you know the Porsche guys were visiting him and we were doing a podcast a couple weeks ago, they were like, "Your cars are better than the museum cars. They're in better condition. They look better. They sound better. They're better uh, examples." You know, huh. that's Jerry. And if you think back to the series, that was Jerry, right? right. Very fastidious, very neat. Right. That's his thing. And you know, Dave's. I don't know what he has now. I only know what I drove back in the 90s. And, you know, it was a 356s, a 914.6, a Ferrari Dino. These were cars I'd never even heard of. I didn't even know what they were. A bunch of Austin Healy's that I didn't really take to. But the Porsches, I went, this is an amazing thing. I didn't know that's what this car was. Where where does he keep it? Is it in? At the time, he was at Santa Monica Airport. Dave was really the first guy down at Santa Monica Airport. And then, you know, they they couldn't fill the hangars and – he got Jerry in, you know, after I went to work on the show. Jerry got me in there, and, and you know, I've been down there for 21 years myself. So wow. it's, uh, it, it's really a reflection. And Dave had really interesting – he had a GMC truck, and uh, what was that old car – that caught for the Pontiac Fiero. Oh, oh nice. Remember yeah. that car? Two M4. He had a Fiero? He had a Fiero and an wow. old, the, the GMC truck Why? he bought I mean, when oh, he wow. first started yeah, yeah. in stand up oh, back in LA. Yeah. And he, Leno still has his first. Scott car. Evans would be so happy. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and, but Dave restored them to 100 point cars. Sure, sure. So, yeah, a Fiero. 100 wow. point I mean, Concord restoration. Has, Imagine has that. to happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Take it and, to Radwood. And win Dave. The whole thing. And uh, and Jay never sells stuff. Right. Jerry does. Right. Jay, the other two do not. Right. That's an interesting difference. You might call in their them hoarders. I, I've heard I've heard Jay described by numerous people as, as an automotive hoarder. Not yeah, a he does. Yeah. He doesn't like to sell stuff. Yeah. Notably, though, this Tesla Model Plaid that he had, and he comes out to Malibu and yeah, talks about it. He, has wouldn't, he com- wouldn't stop talking about he it. Can't, he has not stopped raving about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, hmm, why would I spend four million but I remember, on a Pagani when I get this thing for a hundred that does zero to sixty in one second? But I, I come remember. Come on, let's go for a ride. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Ah, Jay! <laughs> I remember back in 2011, 12, he wouldn't shut up for a year about the Volt. He was just all in he on the Chevy the Volt. Volt. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. loved it. So, you know, <clears> but just... that's he's kind of approaches it the same way I do, which is it's this whole new area to have fun in. Right. Don't eliminate anything that you do or you drive, right? And I may keep my Defender and have both of them because I do like the Land Rover Defender and I like how I feel in it. This is just a whole new way to have fun, right? Yeah, okay. And I understand not everybody can do that, but... 
if, if I only could afford one car, you know, uh, Ooh, what's that's, the little that's, that's the one, Chevy yeah. one electric car? I would be going electric right now. Yeah. What's that little she- the Chevy Bolt? The Bolt. Right. We were with someone yeah, yesterday yeah. who had a Chevy yeah. Bolt on this uh, uh, Scout we were doing. And it was great. He's like, you know, he's telling me about the battery. If we plug it in too much, it catches fire. Right. He goes, I yeah, don't yeah. care. Well, he goes, but I'm getting the new one tomorrow, and then I'm going to have close to 300. And I I'm, mean, look, the, the Volt. What else do you need? The Volt and the Bolt were both our <clears throat> car of the year at various points. And, like, I, I still remember driving that yeah. Bolt and being like, like, damn, right. this is so impressive. Because it takes you out of the gas game. It takes you out of the price of gas. And you're, you're at the very least, if you're just charging this thing overnight and you're waking up with a full tank, yep. full battery, yeah, yeah. that changes your life yep. instantly. Yep. No, I agree. Right? I agree. Right? All right. So well, who has the better collection? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll I don't. A, I mean, that's the wrong that a question. A joke, Ask a joke, me yeah, a different yeah. question. I'll throw a curveball in. Cause, uh, cause, 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 which just collection to do answer. you like well, better? Me? Yeah, you like Jerry's. Well, let's throw Bruce Meyer's collection in there. Ooh. I, I would still pick Jerry's because I'm a I'm a Porsche geek. I'm a nut, oh, yeah, yeah, but there's yeah, yeah. No, it's not you know. It, I would it's take only I would that. take Bruce's uh, just because of the Bentley. Yeah, but this is a weird thing. It's, I know. You know well, yeah. Sprinkles cupcake. Do you like the most? They're all f- great. All right. Yeah, We're but no, no but you're, you're in the unique position of like knowing all these people pretty intimately. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, Bruce know. has yeah. probably the car I desire the most. Oh, it, you which know. is it would, so. Which car do I desire from someone's collection? Yeah, it would yeah. be Bruce's '61 250 Ferrari short wheelbase right. that won Le Mans. Uh, right. Okay. Hands down. That's the car you're I a, want. Because you're a Ferrari guy. When you peel everything back, you, you claim Porsche, but you always you I always do come back like to them. Ferrari. But yeah, yeah. yeah, they're super expensive. Right. I've, I yeah, I yeah, owned yeah. a Dino, but I didn't drive it as much as I drove the 911s. You know, it's it, but I do like to have one Ferrari every now See, and again. Bruce has a Bentley. He's got like I forget a what lower, he gets, like a 29 yeah, yeah, yeah. Bentley. And that, he drives like, that. Yeah, I know. I've seen that. That would be the one that I would take. So it's I was I described it as that one too. Anyways. Because Bruce's collection, I think, is numerically smaller than the other guys, but it's like the Tiffany case with all the best mm-hmm. jewels in it. That's whereas true. like Leno's got like the Tiffany store. Like, yeah, he's no, kind of got. Leno's got a Target with really cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's he's got, but he's got a Pep Boys. But I, I, think, he, I think Bruce has a lot more cars than people realize. Also, like he Bruce's has his collection he, is unparalleled. It's yeah, amazing, yeah. and he also has the Peterson, which yes, yeah. right. We call him world's poorest billionaire, right? Right. Because his collection, even though it's amazing, yeah, the people he hangs with have better collections. Oh, I have two GTOs. No, I mean that's, we haven't even you know, talked about like Mullen. You know, talk about like oh, the biggest okay. collection. He gets in the French swoop. Stuff. He's yeah, my neighbor. His collection's yeah. humongous. Humongous. Yeah, humongous. But the, at the end of the day, you can only drive one car at a time. All of these guys you're talking about, too, are drivers. They just love to drive. And yeah. it's, you know, I can only speak for myself, but, and I, I could even say the same for Jerry. We I was just say, you can speak for Jerry. We no, like yeah. to drive. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. We don't really get off on a showing a car or staring at it in a hangar. It's the motion, it's the movement, it's that drive out to Malibu. Right. The now story drive. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Elderly men getting coffee. Elderly men. <laughs> the drive for us is the chill and and the fun, and that can be accomplished in at pretty much any price point as long as we're choosing carefully. And I've done it in, in the old 68 uh, Cougar XR7, Yeah. and I've done it in the million-dollar vehicles. And it's to, the drive is still the same. <laughs> Right, it's still well, the same. Well, I did want to. I did want to kind of, and we're approaching kind of our, our timeline here. But end on on this question. You know, it does relate back to your car matchmaker. I had, I had a whole series of questions on like, you know, I read this article you did uh, where you called out in 2015 that good bets for future collecting would include a 1958 Porsche 356 Speedster, mm-hmm. a 92 or later Ferrari Testarossa, Ooh. a 1989 Ferrari Precious. 328. Or uh, or and a 1989 Porsche 911 Turbo 930 five speed. Ooh. Now, I'm wrong did, about just about every one of those. Those I went up say, and then you? went down. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think okay. Testarossas are still up. Testarossas are up a little yeah. bit. They made a lot of those. He's got I a, remember got that a 930. Moment. I got a 980, so. 930. I got oh, a four yeah. speed. So, yeah. um, what's the question? Well, the question I can was comment on the, that, the question though. was uh, how do you think you did? Now you just said it. You're up and you're down. I was thinking like these these, these all went up. They did for the most part. But right. here's my philosophy about all of it, that if you're buying things that you love, you hope that they go up. But if they go down, that's fine, too, because you love it. Right. So, you know, let's look back at the Dino, right? I, I was offered back in the day this Dino that had 6,000 original miles and fly yellow. It was exactly what I wanted. And over the ownership period of 12 years of that car, that car 
jammed up at one point, and I drove it less. And then it came down and started tracking down. I started driving it a lot. I was happy wherever I was, right? Right, right. Sometimes be happy, like, wow, that was a great investment. Then it would go down. I go, boy, I don't care that this has gone down back to what I bought it at. I love driving this car. Now it just kind of feels easier. So that's what I'm always looking at when I buy a car. Okay. And I think that's the most important thing. Yes, upside. Um, practically, will it just hold its value in the general area? Um, but I would say... Pretty much every car that I've bought, I, I have not lost a dollar, and mostly I have a free car experience. And sometimes I pull that off with new cars, like, you know, my 2015 GT3 comes to mind, <clears throat> where I get out of that for an amount of money that would, you know, make people upset. You yeah. Know, <laughs> three years of, 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 of payments to a bank that totaled like $6,000, right, right? Right, Because right. you just... You're buying smart and in and, and, and get a little lucky. Get a little. You get a luck, yeah, little yeah, lucky, yeah. and the ownership experience is like you don't even care because you right. love driving it every day. Right. right. Do you see? Do you think this could ever happen with EVs? Do you think yes. they'll ever? That's, like, do so you think they'll, here's, yeah, yeah. here's a setup, right? A good okay. Question. So, yeah. uh, you know, cast your mind forward. Imagine it's the year twenty one, twenty two. We're on Mars, and it's the the uh, Pebble Beach Concorde de Elegance. Revival presented by Haggerty, and they bring out Elon Musk's head, right? Uh, because he's plugged into his the singularities yes. happen, and he's the guest judge. Uh, and over at the Gooding auction, Does he still also tweet the head exactly. <laughs> Did tweeting. they stop the head from tweeting? At the Gooding auction, there's an EV. There's a whole EV class of vehicles that they're putting up. What's what's on there? Also presented by Haggerty. Also presented by Haggerty. Is there That's is hilarious. there anything? That you can see currently that would should be purchased and squirreled away. Are these going to be like the you brass? mean electric cars? Yes. Yeah, that's like, a great question. I I don't right? think I can is, answer is it. it. I mean, I, I, surely EV one is going to be one. Although there's no, there's like very there's few. Two. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I think Coppola has one apparently. Or yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't it a feel RAV4? like the same nerdiness of these people who go get original Ataris and original Apple computers? iPhone and, one, and yeah, iPhone, iPhone ones. Yeah. It's like it's cool, but is it exactly desirable? Because there's such a tech side to this stuff, and don't we want the latest, greatest? Right? Might be I, the first plaid, right? Could could conceivably like what a I game changer. I don't. I don't know. I I feel like it, it's not going to be the case. I'm probably going to be wrong about that, but I just feel like. These things are a technological electronic of some kind more than a collectible car, and that as they age, they don't age as well. Interesting. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. You yeah, know, yeah, that yeah, we're yeah. not – I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know but that then, I'm going to want to go back to a Model Y from 2021. I, I remember when, something that flies. Oh, yeah. Remember right. when people used to drive their own cars? Like, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, like, how right. dangerous. I, right, feel right. The, I feel the same way you do, but I also feel that we're, we're wrong. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. You know what I mean? The like pattern would tell us we are completely wrong. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. All right. Well, look. Yeah. This was a great conversation. Loved it. Loved having you on. Loved to have you back. Thank you ha- for having me. It was yeah. fun. This yeah. was fun. And it's, a lot of fun. It was inevitable. Yeah. I love podcasting. <laughs> I love podcasting. Yeah, me too. Awesome. And um, Well, Spike, thank you very much, and I'll see you when we do your podcast. All right, man. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Thank you.